Welcome to N4 Electro Techniques, and in this lesson, we'll be looking at magnetism and electromagnetism. There are three types of magnets. We get a natural magnet made from lodestone, a permanent magnet made from soft iron, electromagnet made from coils and an iron core. Here we have a bar magnet. Now we find the lines of flux run from north to south outside the magnet. The lines of flux form closed loops. The lines of flux never intersect. And the lines of flux run from south to north inside the magnet. Now to determine the strength of the magnetic field running from the north pole to the south pole, we can use this formula. Now the letter B is our magnetic flux density. The magnetic flux is measured in Weber, the area measured in meters square, and the magnetic flux density measured in Tesla. Once again, looking at the formula, we have the magnetic flux density, the magnetic flux, and the area. Now, if we are given a magnetic flux of 600 micro Weber, it is equal to 600 times 10 to the minus 6. If the area is 0, 0,002 meters square, if we substitute the values into our equation, we end up with a magnetic flux density of 0, 0,3 Tesla. Now, the magnetomotive force is the strength of the field in the wire, and that is represented by the letter F. Now, MMF will depend on the amounts of current flowing through the coils and the number of coils. Let's look at a past exam question. If a magnetomotive force of 250 amps is required to produce a flux of 5 milliweber in a magnetic circuit, what must the reluctance be? So to calculate the reluctance, it will be MMF, which is represented by the letter F, over the magnetic flux measured in Weber. Therefore, 250 amps divided by 5 milliweber, and we end up with a reluctance of 50,000 amps per Weber. Here is an illustration of an iron ring. We have the leakage flux, which does not pass through the circuit. We have the fringing flux, which leaks outside of the sides of the air gap. And we have the useful flux, which passes through the circuit. Now, just to show you on a single phase transformer where we will find leakage flux, it will be found around coil A and coil B. Our fringing flux is found around the sides of the air gap. Now, F represents the magnetomotive force. I is the current in amperes. N is the number of turns. Our flux measured in Weber. And the reluctance measured in amps per Weber. Therefore, if we look at the formula, we can say flux is equal to MMF over S. Or we can say it is equal to the current multiplied by the number of turns divided by the reluctance. Now, we're going to do a calculation where current is the unknown variable. So therefore, let's manipulate the equation. So current is equal to the reluctance multiplied by the magnetic flux divided by the number of turns. Therefore, if we are given a reluctance of 0, 0.044 times 10 to the power of 6 and 350 turns with a magnetic flux of 0, 0.025 Weber, if we substitute the values into our equation, we end up with a current flow of 3,143 amperes. Here is an experiment showing the magnetic lines of flux when the conductor carries current. Using a piece of cardboard with some iron filings, we have a DC battery source and a potentiometer. Our ammeter is connected in series with the load. When current passes through the conductor, the lines of flux will align themselves to the lines of magnetic flux. Here we have Maxwell's screw rule. Now if we're tightening the screw, the downward motion would be the direction of current and the clockwise direction of the screw turning would represent the lines of magnetic flux. Using a right-hand grip rule, the thumb points in the direction of magnetic field and the four fingers point in the direction of current. Now to determine the magnetic field strength, it can be determined by the amounts of current flowing through the coils. We can place an iron core inside of the coils and we can increase the number of turns. Using Fleming's left-hand rule to determine which direction current is flowing, 
the thumb will point in the direction of force, the index finger in the direction of magnetic field, and the middle finger in the direction of current flow. Here's an exam type question. Make a neat sketch to illustrate magnetic fringing, leakage flux, and useful flux. This is the illustration. Now, fringing flux is the force of repulsion over the air gap. Leakage flux is the magnetic flux which does not completely pass through the magnetic circuit. And the useful flux is the magnetic flux which flows through the magnetic circuit. Here is a hysteresis loop. Now, if we take the theoretical part of this, if the magnetic field applied to the magnetic material is increased and then decreased back to its original value, the magnetic field inside the material does not return to its original value. The internal field lags behind the external field. This behavior results in a loss of energy known as hysteresis loss. Now, the hysteresis loop, if we take a look at B on this illustration, which falls on the y-axis, it represents the magnetic field developed inside the magnetic material. Now, on the x-axis, represented by H, it is the magnetic field that we are applying to the material. Now, what we find is that as we increase H, we also increase B. At some point, B becomes less responsive as we increase H, which we reach saturation point. However, if we decrease H, we'll also decrease B, and that is represented by the x-axis and the y-axis. Now, what we find is that there is a slight amount of residual magnetism at point B, even though H is zero. So what this means is that even when there is no current passing through the material, there is still some magnetism that is left behind, and that is known as residual magnetism. Now, in electromagnetism, there are two types of losses. We get the hysteresis loss, which is basically a magnetic loss. And then we get eddy current losses, which consist of heat loss and energy loss. Once again, thank you very much for watching these videos. Don't forget to like these videos and to subscribe.